Hi everyone, this is Learning with Linda, and today I bring you an update regarding the summer EBT benefits, guys. So if you guys remember, previously we would discuss summer PEBT very constantly. Well, now they're going to be called the summer EBT benefits, and so those are expected to be coming in next year, pretty much, in 2024. There's, of course, eligibility and requirements that must be met. And then, of course, the states also have to apply for this one. So there's going to be important deadlines, and we're going to be also covering the potential payout dates. Now, two states in specifically have already expressed interest in applying for the 2024 summer EBT. So, of course, I'm going to be providing you with all that information. Then we also have an update for those in the state of Kentucky regarding the summer 2023 PEBT benefits. So make sure you guys stay until the end of this video to ensure that you receive this information. Now, before we get started, if you're interested in the latest news regarding stimulus, child tax credit, SNAP, PEBT, and everything in between, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Now, let's get right to it. So in the name of transparency, I always want to show you exactly where I'm getting my information from. So as you can see, here I am on the website for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. It would be the USDA Food and Nutrition Service. As you can see here on their website, they're already talking about the summer EBT program that is going to be a permanent program and is set to begin in the summer of 2024. So here on their website, they've already released um, pretty much a lot of information, including everything from like summer EBT eligibility, certification and verification for example here's one of the documents I found with lots of information other resources as well includes food research and action center they're already talking about administrative costs for 2024 and here they give a little bit more details as to how this is going to be funded so for example they're saying here that beginning in 2024 the states territories and Indian tribal organizations will be required to cover 50% of the summer EBT where if you guys remember um, when it came to the summer PEBT, that was funded 100% by the federal government. So this was definitely going to be a little bit um, different. And then there's uh, giving you plenty of information here as well. There's also going to be a timeline for the states that, you know, that are interested in applying that they're going to have to meet certain deadlines, right? And one of those deadlines is from what I can recall would be December, um, I'm sorry, not January 1st, and then also February 15th, as you can see down here. So as I mentioned previously, the summer EBT is expected to start next year, right? So here's a little bit more details regarding all of this. The Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023 created a permanent nationwide summer electronic benefit transfer, otherwise known as the summer EBT, and it's going to be, of course, a program. Now, beginning in 2024, as I mentioned previously, the states, territories, and Indian tribal organizations will be required to cover 50% of the summer EBT administrative expenses from non-federal sources. If you guys remember, um, for when it came to the PBT because of the pandemic, that's pretty much why that started, right? Um, now that the you know they've pretty much lifted the uh, the whole emergency declaration. Now they're asking um, pretty much for the states to provide the funding, whereas in comparison to before, all the funding came from the federal government. That's why it says here um, the federal funding to cover 100% of the administrative cost. That's going to be a departure from that. So the summer EBT provides grocery buying benefits to low income families with school age children when the schools are closed for the summer. Now, more than 29 million children across America could benefit from summer EBT. Each youth would receive a card loaded with $120. If you're wondering the amount, again, it, it would be of $120 to help buy food during the months that school is out. Now, there's going to be some important dates for the states, and obviously the states must meet these deadlines if they're interested in um, applying for the summer EBT program. Now, here they are pretty much. So the important deadlines for the 2024 summer EBT, it's going to take careful planning and preparation by the states and territories and technical assistance by the USDA. Obviously, everyone must work together are critical to ensure full implementation of the summer EBT in 2024. Now states, again, the states, right, it's a state's decision, the states must express interest in providing summer 2024 EBT benefits to the USDA by January 1st, pretty much. So each year, a state must submit a management and administration plan for summer EBT, and it seems like this must happen by February 15th. 
States that have finished their annual budget process for fiscal year 2024 and have not been able to secure summer EBT funding should consider uh, their options, unfortunately. Now, summer EBT issuances will start as early as May of 2024 and continue through September of 2024. But again, this is going to vary state by state. Now, moving on to one important aspect of the summer EBT, of course, you must qualify for it, right? So let's talk about the eligibility criteria. So eligibility for summer EBT may be established in several ways, guys. So children eligible for summer EBT include children who are in the instructional uh, year immediately preceding the summer or during the summer operational period. So for one, they must attend a national school lunch program or a school breakfast program participating school and have been certified as eligible for free or reduced price school meals through, once again, the application for the national school lunch program or direct certification. They must also attend that school, right, whether it's a national school lunch program or the school breakfast program participating special provision school, CP or provision two or three and are directly certified or categorically eligible. Here are other ways to qualify for this program. So they must attend, once again, an NSLP or an SVP participating school, but are not already certified either by application or direct certification and are otherwise certified by a summer EBT application. Of course, this includes children attending a special provision school and or children who were not certified as eligible for free and reduced price during the preceding instructional year. On, and then in addition to this, another option would be they do not attend an NSLP slash SVP participating school, but are able to be directly certified. Now let's move on to a couple of states, guys, that have already expressed interest in applying for the summer EBT program. And of course, remember that all states have a deadline pretty much, which would be of January 1st, right? If they're interested in applying for this, then of course they must let the USDA know. And then that way they can ensure their 50-50 funding, right? Again, 50 comes from the state and then the other 50 comes from the federal government. So one of those states that it did express interest, according to my research, is California. So California anti-hunger advocates and state legislators were able to successfully advocate to ensure that funding, including for a statewide application to be operational for the summer of 2024, was set aside for summer EBT through their state's annual appropriations process. Now, they estimated the amount needed for the 50% match by reviewing the administrative funding asked for the pandemic EBT program. The state of California calculated approximately $94 million for PEBT implementation and therefore included $47 million in its budget to cover the 50% match for the summer EBT for the summer of 2024. Now, another state that is also saying that they are interested in applying for the summer EBT program but, you know, it's not for sure just yet is the state of Montana. So this is according to my research. On October 10th, Montana's health department director said that the state of Montana is applying in January for the next round of federal money that helps pay for meals for children in the summer. However, educators and others in the state who work with schools and raise money to feed hungry kids said this week they hope the state follows through after the department declined to apply for the $10 million in federal PBT funds or, as we all know, the pandemic electronic benefit transfer money this summer, citing administrative burden. Now, again, guys, this program provides funding for families with school children who don't have access to school meals during the summer. So again, according to the Montana Health Department director, he basically said that, you know, the state is interested in applying. And of course, we hope that Montana pretty much follows through. And now moving on to a very completely different topic, we're going to be talking about the summer PEBT of 2023. Again, we talk about summer pandemic EBT. There's actually 43 states that have been approved. And guys, this is the final list. It's updated as of today, October 31st. Now, unfortunately, there was a couple of states that decided not to apply for the summer PEBT benefits. So Naturally, these states will not be receiving PBT in 2023. This is the la latest information. So that includes Alaska, Idaho, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, South Dakota, and Texas. 
Now, guys, remember when it came to Idaho and pretty much all the states, actually, the deadline for the state to submit a plan for PBT was July 14th. And so these are the states that pretty much decided not to apply. Now, moving on to those in the state of Kentucky, guys, here's the latest update regarding the 2023 PEBT benefits, specifically summer, right? So Kentucky summer PBT plan was approved, as we all know, on May 10th with the standard benefit amount of $120 to all eligible students. Here we're talking about kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. Now, initially, the state plan was to send these benefits in mid-August. This was according to the USDA website. But then the, the date was pretty much later changed to the end of October, which meant no later than November 1st. But I've been doing a little bit of research. I've seen emails. I've seen comments on some forums that I follow. Um, like on Facebook and um, Reddit and then people are getting different dates so let me show you guys here what I found and I mean there's no updates though from Kentucky PBT website the state is not confirming or letting us know the any of the official payout dates so I'm just going to be presenting you what I found so far so for example here I found this email that says thank you for contacting the DCBS PBT team um, at this time, we do not have an exact date on when the PBT allotments are deposited. Um, it says here, students who are eligible should receive the summer 2023 PBT no later than November 1st. And those that have missed due to COVID-19, it should be no later than December 1st of 2023. So it seems like some people are saying November 1st. I would say that if you do not receive your benefits by November 1st, it's unfortunately to me, I assume it's likely that they will push back the dates again until mid-November. And so I went on another forum and this is another information that I found that I hope is helpful. It says we received an inquiry regarding PBT benefits. I have contacted the PBT department who advised they are due to be issued the week of November 13th. So again, there's several dates being thrown around, but all I know is the deadline for these dates to send these benefits pretty much would be December 30th. And well, like I mentioned previously, if you go on the Kentucky PBT website, there's no information, unfortunately, regarding both summer uh, PBT benefits nor the school year, right? So as we all know, when it comes to the school year PBT, Kentucky's PBT plan for children in schools, again, here we're talking about school year 2022 through 2023, was approved back on July 28th. Now the program provides a reimbursement for families can use to replace meals they missed as a result of missing school whether it was in-person, virtual, or homeschool activities for COVID-19 related reasons. Now, the school year 2022 through 2023 student PBT reimbursement covers all months between September 1st and May 11th of 2023. Now, for in-person students, the issuance is equivalent to the number of eligible days multiplied by $8.18 for September 2022 through May 11th of 2023. Now, guys, the information I found here um, pretty much states that all students that are approved for PBT here, again, we're talking about the school year, will receive their reimbursement by no later than December 1st of 2023. Now, I want to hear from you guys. Has anyone received their PBT benefits, whether it was for the summer or for the school year? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, if you're wondering if you've received the PBT benefits, again, this is uh, pretty much information as to how you can check that, right? So the PBT reimbursement is issued to the EBT card for those that have one, the EBT card the child received SNAP benefits on. Now, if the child has received a PBT in the past, then the PBT reimbursement is issued on the same PBT card in which the child previously received PBT benefits. If the child has not received PBT in the past, a PBT card will be issued to the child with their PBT issuance amount preloaded on the card. And well, that is all the updates that I have for today. Remember to turn on your notification button to know when I have uploaded a new video. See you guys next time.